Hi everybody, welcome to The Edge Confidential. I'm here with Tyson Sullivan, how are you? Wonderful, thanks for having me, Jenny. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm so glad you're here. I've wanted you to come on the show for literally like three years, like since the beginning, because you're, you're awesome. And people don't know about our backstory, which I'll get into. You are very dear to me because of the way you helped me many years ago. So I really respect you. I love you. you. I love you too, and really, really respect you. Um, so I, I'm so excited for everybody to hear your story, where you've been, where, you've, where you came from, how you got sober, um, and what you're doing with your life now. So if we could just rewind back that journey for you, um, when did it all start? I remember as a young kid not feeling quite the, like a normal, you know, go to school and be a good boy and mm -hmm. love his family. And like, I, I was definitely re acting out before I ever took my first drink or drug. Mm -hmm. And I used to like, you know, derail, try to derail trains in my neighborhood, throw rocks at cars. Uh -huh. I was just full of anger. Uh -huh. And um, so anyways, a lot of uh, wild stuff at a very young age. And um, I remember the first time my mind ever like got quiet was after my first drink. The effects it produced, I was like, <sighs> and I like took a breath for the first time at the age of 11. Was like, I felt calm and I was like, whatever this is, this feels good, right? Uh -huh. And it was off to the races from there. Mm -hmm. um, I started smoking pot, drinking like anybody else, right, that, mm -hmm. that starts partying. And then I did my first line of crystal meth at the age of 13. Wow. And uh, that was probably pretty young to start. Did your parents know what was going on at all? Or? They did not in the beginning, but I also grew up around um, you know, how in my household, you know, it was like my dad, you know, he did the best he could with what he had, but he also was like okay with like smoking pot and mm -hmm. like, you know, he kind of thought it'd be cooler to like let my kids smoke at the house and have them run on run in the streets. Yeah. Which a lot of parents which I believe a lot of parents do. Yeah. feel that way. And, and and my answer to that would be try to show them how important it is to, to care and love themselves enough to not have to get high, you know? And um, to deal with those feelings and those thoughts yeah. and whatever you're going through. Because I think when we start doing that at such a young age, because my story was the same, it was a coping mechanism for stuff that was going on in my life. Absolutely. You know, and, and exactly what you said. When I started, it was like, oh, I, I can relax. But I was just putting a Band-Aid on what I really needed to deal with. So you were in and out of prison for a long time, right? Like yes. over a decade? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, what have you learned from your experience in prison? As far as what I learned the most about myself was that I have the potential to be a very dangerous individual if I don't have any kind of spiritual connection or any kind of consciousness, mm -hmm. a God consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm just all in with serving myself and not caring who gets hurt in the process. And I think I'm any, I speak for anybody mm -hmm. that goes that route. Mm -hmm. um, I, you can learn how to harden your heart and mm -hmm. build some concrete walls around it for not only just to sur for survival mode, but also because you're not doing anything to try and better yourself or, or be better others, you for know? Sure. So put I, I saw how dark you can go. Mm -hmm. And I was in, in there with people that have, you just see it. They're all, we all have, we're all the same. It's like, and we all have the same results when we do this or we do this, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I met, people in there that you know they're 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 murderers and the worst of society and and they just at the end of the day it just they have no soul you know and like i got i felt what it was like to not have a soul mm. and it's like how miserable do you want to be right you know that's what it was like for me yeah and so that journey into recovery um and finding the spiritual component for you what did that look like so I, I had stopped uh, even acknowledging anything to do with spirituality or, or re religion or, and I, and I hadn't prayed and, or done anything that acknowledges that for years, right? And I actually started making fun of people that were like, you know, believing in God or praying or, and, um, and I became, I even started saying, I'm an atheist, you know, like mm -hmm. I am God, you mm -hmm. know, and, um, and, uh, my my bottom where I finally was like um, 
after maybe 15 to 20 years, I said a simple prayer for the first time in 15 years. God help me. And I felt something happen like right then and there. I don't wow. know what it was, but it was like reconnecting to, to, to life again, the spirit of life, you know, and I, it was like so indescribable. And Where it wasn't like, like was I was in prison oh, wow. for my, okay. last my last time. Yeah. And I was, uh, I just felt like I looked in the mirror and I'm like, dude, like you're getting, you're like, you're getting old, your, your hair is gray, your teeth are falling out. Like, bro, you, I remember th I looked at myself I'm like, you're shot out, dude. Like, and I'm like, the gig's up. And I was mentally losing my, my grip on reality. That's where it, I can handle anything physical. When I started having my mental health was gone, yeah, that yeah. scared me a little bit. So when you, when you asked for help and you surrendered, what did that feel like? So I started saying little like that from that day on. And this, this was right before I got released from prison. The, the laws changed in California. I was in prison for a, uh, a little bit of heroin, like a minuscule amount. And I, they changed the law and, and made it a misdemeanor. And they said, we're gonna let you go home early, but you gotta go to a rehab. Okay. And I remember, and this was like a week after I started praying. Wow. Right? And, uh, got shot. and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go to a rehab for sure. Mm -hmm. And I got there and I, and, and I ever since that, week before I got released from prison, I started praying. I've prayed every day since then. And I'm a little over eight years clean and sober now. Congratulations. And thank you. And, um, and yeah, I, I truly believe that was the start of, of like, literally my, my higher power is like, welcome home, Tyson, you know? And um, this isn't where it ends. This is where it begins. So what did you start doing on the day-to-day -day basis to stay sober? I. Uh, so I, 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 I surrendered to the fact that I'm my own worst enemy when I trust in my own thinking. And I started letting other people do the thinking for me in the very beginning. I was like, I had a, I had a strict regimen from my sponsor of, he actually gave me a, 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 an agreement and I had to sign it. And it said I was willing to do this, 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 and like a bunch of things through every day. And I would do those things. And there would be times I would forget something or miss something, or I'd start thinking on my own, I'd rely on myself again, and then he would check me. Nice. And I love, <laughs> I love that this man, because what, what's so funny is my, my, my sponsor is a yoga teacher. Okay. And I have, you know, this hard, tough guy, Tyson. Quite the contrast, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that's how desperate I was to get sober. That's I let a yoga needed. teacher direct yeah, yeah. my life. Right. Right? Yeah. And like, and, <laughs> and, it, I always joke, I always mention that every year when I take a birthday, but um, it was literally following direction from another person and then starting to stay connected to all of the people in my group. Mm -hmm. that, kept, that gave me my sanity mm -hmm. and like that's what taught me how to, to have a, um, a spiritual awakening and also a, a psychic change. Mm -hmm. So how did you find your purpose? I always like to say it like this. Um, I'm, not really, I'm not really too sure about this uh, eternal hell in the afterlife, right, that people talk about. Mm -hmm. But I've witnessed this hell on earth of my friends and family dying from drug and alcohol abuse. And I've always been like a soldier in some kind of army. Mm -hmm. It's always been the wrong army. Mm -hmm. And now I've found the proper one that I'm a, 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 an advocate for. And my, my purpose, I knew the first couple of times I was able to help somebody else and show them what I had just become and help them become it too. And, 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 and I have a pretty powerful influence on the, on the way I, I talk to people. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, was shown, the universe was like, this is exactly where you belong. And I felt it 100% in the core of my soul. This is exactly what you're supposed to be doing for the rest of your life, Tyson. Mm -hmm. And if you can make a little dent in somebody's life and, and prevent them from an early death, from drug abuse and alcohol abuse, then you, you're, you, you have a fulfilled life. Absolutely, you know? and, that's, and that's how it was for me too when I got sober. I knew that I needed to do this wholeheartedly, help people. Um, and you helped me, you know, I went through, I went through a treatment center, you guys, that I wasn't even supposed to be at. I wasn't supposed to be at this place, right? And I ended up there. I have no idea what treatment is. I was terrified and you were there and you were my 
I don't know what, what admissions you call it. counselor. Yeah, and uh, and you brought me down off the ledge probably every single day, and a lot of that stuff from back then is super blurry. But I remember your kindness and your patience, and just your willing to like sit with me and just say it's okay, just just take it one day at a time, and just all the things you did and said. And so yeah, like you impacted my life and changed my life in a lot of ways in a moment where I so desperately needed it. Like if you hadn't have been there talking me off the ledge and maybe you didn't even realize you were doing that as we don't realize a lot of times, I probably would have bounced out of that place. Absolutely. And I, I could be dead right now. So we never know the impact we're gonna have on people. And you've been able to have that impact on people throughout these years. So what do you do now to help people? So I'm, uh I work, I work in the recovery field. I work for Stairway Recovery in Los Angeles. My good friend, uh, Michael Lynch, he's the founder of Stairway Recovery Homes. Shout out to Michael. Shout out to Michael. <laughs> and uh, m me and him were in, in prison together back in 2000. And um, we both were like on the wrong path, you Crazy. know, and we were like the, one of those guys you didn't want to mess with, you know. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I had saw when I got clean that uh, he was he was clean and doing like some amazing things for people and I and we finally got to reconnect and and God I know it was God like put, put us put me in his path at the perfect timing where now we get to work together to help save addicts lives and um, that's what I do full time uh, that's my day job mm -hmm. but it's also my passion yeah. and. Um, I've also, I'm also like learning a bunch of new ways to help people. I'm an interventionist and uh, I've gone, a, I'm pretty powerful at walking in and like taking over a room mm -hmm. and helping somebody like. You have that energy for sure. Yeah. yeah. So I, I found it very effective. Recently, I've been working with a lot of adolescents. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine, um, he has an adolescent program here and he uses me to go and like get these kids to get on a plane with me and, and come to rehab, wow. you know? And I, and I also am very effective with that. This one kid the other day told his mom, whoever comes through that door, I'm throwing hands with them. <laughs> and you're like, Bring and it. I walked in and he was like, okay, I'm not throwing hands with this guy. And um, <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> so anyways, uh, I just love what I do. Um, and aside from being able, this is extra credit, being able to work in the recovery field for a career. Mm -hmm. But my true passion is when I'm helping men take them through the steps and like and help them for fun and for free after hours that's my true sanity and my true program yeah. you know and and before we stop you have a campaign that you've been on recently let's let's uh promote that so you got to spell it out though because we're not saying yeah that so on uh the show. <laughs> so recently we lost two good friends of mine uh, back to back within a week's period of time in our community in Los Angeles, they both do overdose from fentanyl and rest in peace I'm to Bill Jericho that. and rest in peace to Mike Kelly. Um, and I, it, it, my, uh, the universe put it on my heart to start something to bring a little more awareness. And the campaign is called F-U-C-K Fentanyl. Boom. And <laughs> you can find us on Facebook. I'm about to, you know, I, I, my goal is to, if I can make any kind of bill change in our, in our country that can help prevent somebody from dying from fentanyl over uh, abuse, then my job's done. And I'm taking this all the way to Washington, D.C. if I have to. Right on. I want to, I want, something needs to change. Yeah. Too I'm many, right too many of our you. friends and family are dying. This isn't funny. No. And this is a, this should be treated like terrorism. It is. Because that's what it is. Yeah. So you guys go on Facebook, F-U-C-K Fentanyl, right? Um, and support the cause here. So thank you so much for being on the show. You're thanks, amazing. Jen. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.